Hey folks, uh, this uh, is another lesson on multiple choices. So this is numbers 41 through 50 uh, to get you prepared for your AP stat test. Uh, just some more sample questions. So to conduct a survey on holiday shopping patterns, a researcher uh, opens a telephone book uh, to a random page, closes her eyes and puts her finger down on the page, then reads off the next 100 names. So which is true? The survey incorporates chance. Well, I suppose, yeah, I suppose there's some chance to that because she's doing it to, on a random page. This uh, uh, procedure results in an SRS. Well, I don't think so. I'll talk about that in a second. And this procedure could easily result in selection bias. I do think it's that also, you guys. Um, it's not a SRS, you guys, because, you know, um, uh, they're in alphabetical order. So if they opened up a page, they can, you know, pick a last name that there's a lot of last names that are the same and probably some family members. So... So, um, uh, all possible shopping groups of size 100 don't have the same chance of being selected. So, it does provide some chance, and um, uh, there is definitely a, a real chance of selection bias. So, I'm going to say choice B on this one. Um, uh, selection bias It's definitely not a SRS because of uh, uh, all the names in alphabetical order. You know, you can pick lots of uh, bullocks in there or... or you know, or whatever is a popular name in that city or town, okay? All right, so um, uh, in a large population of college students, 20% of the students have experienced feeling of math anxiety. If you take a random uh, sample of 10 students from this population, the probability that exactly two students have experienced math anxiety is, okay, this is a binomial distribution, you guys, and since it said exactly, you can just plug it in your calculator, binomial PDF when it said exactly you guys if it said um, two or less than or at most two then that would be a CDF or cumulative but if this one's a PDF so uh, 10 and then the probability and how many you're gonna do and when you do that you punch that in and you get uh, the closest one is choice A after that okay so it is a binomial because there's two choices whether they have anxiety or they don't have anxiety okay all right so here there's uh, 20 multiple choice questions on an exam each I uh, have four possible responses of which only one is correct. So that means 25%, right? One fourth of the time they're correct. So each question is worth five points. Suppose that a student guesses the answer uh, to each of these questions, each of these 20 questions. Which of her guesses from the question to question, uh, I'm sorry, with her guesses from each question being independent? So uh, the student's expected mean score on the exam is, well, okay, since it's um, uh, one fourth or 0.25, um, you just take um, uh, the number of uh, problems, multiply that, so your mean score is just got the number uh, times each probability, and then I get uh, five, so that would be choice choice B, or choice, uh, 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 choice C, sorry. So choice B is a deception, you guys, because it's asking, so what's her mean score on the exam? Well, uh, she's going to get five correct, so five times five would be 25, okay? All right, I almost got tripped up on that too. So the probability that there uh, that a three-year-old battery still works is 0.8. A certain flashlight takes four working batteries. So and the batteries are independent and are selected for the flashlight, which is the probability that the flashlight works. Okay, well, since each one has 0.8 of a chance and there's four of them, it's going to be 0.8 to the fourth. So that gets me choice D. All right, in a population... Uh, has a standard deviation, uh, then the uh, standard deviation of the mean of 100, um, uh, 100 randomly selected items from this population is, okay, well if it's uh, your sample standard deviation is your, is your population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, okay, which in this case is 100, so it's, uh, I get choice C. All right, so a phone, uh, a phone in poll conducted by a newspaper reported that 73% of those who called in uh, liked the business tycoon uh, Donald Trump. The unknown uh, true percentage of American citizens who like Donald Trump is, uh, okay, so a statistics, you guys, is just a number that describes a sample. Okay, a sample is, um, you know, studying a part in order to gain information on the whole. A parameter is a, a fixed number that we usually don't know that describes the population, and, and then the population, you guys, is the entire group that we that we want to gain information about. Okay, so uh, what does this describe? This describes um, uh, this describes the parameter, you guys. So it's going to be part C. Okay, the parameter is a uh, uh, just some number that we don't know that's describing the population, okay? So this 73% is uh, uh, talking about the, 
a number that we don't know that describes our population. All right, uh, an SRS of 1,000 Americans found that 61% uh, were satisfied with their service provided by the dealer from which they bought their car. An SRS of 1,000 Canadians found that 58% were satisfied with the services provided by the dealer from which they bought their car. So the sample uh, variability associated with these statistics are, are they about the same? Yeah, they're pretty close. They're about the same to me. Now let's see, this one says, much smaller for Canadians since the population of Canada is much smaller than that of the United States. Well, that doesn't matter because they're both SRSs of 1,000, you guys. And then this one's uh, population larger for the Canadians. And that says almost the same thing as that one. So it's, it's choice A on that one, okay, because they are about the same. All right. Uh, from 58 to uh, 61. Okay, consider the following scatter plots, okay, which uh, is true about their correlation. Okay, none or zero. Well, uh, this one's probably zero, and this one's probably zero. This one is probably not zero. This one's probably, uh, you know, it's close to negative one because they're pretty linear right here. So uh, let's see, this one says one is zero, one is negative, one, that's not that one. Uh, one is zero and both the others are negative, it's not that one, because these two are zeros, I would say. So two are zero and the other is negative one, or two are zeros, the other one is close to negative one. It must be choice E. I don't think it's exactly one, I think it's close to negative one, okay? All right, so which of the following are true statements? Sampling parameters are used to make inferences about population statistics. Remember, parameter is a fixed number that we usually don't know that describes the population. So a sampling parameter, now remember a parameter is some number that describes the population. So um, uh, let's see, so uh, statistics from smaller samples have more variability. Well, that's true. Uh, parameters are fixed, uh, while statistics uh, vary depending on which sample is chosen. Okay, sampling statistics, you guys, are, are what's used to make inferences about population proportions, not sampling parameters. So it's not uh, choice one right there. And sample sizes, uh, when the smaller sample size, the larger spread in the sample distribution. So, so both two and three are correct on that one, choice C. Okay, I got one more for this, this lesson here. Uh, let me click that. Okay, the average noise level in the cafeteria is 36 decibels with a standard deviation of 5. Assuming this is normal, what's the probability that the noise level is somewhere between uh, 30 and 40? Okay, this is a confidence interval one. You can use your formula if you want, or you can use your calculator. I'd choose to use my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to go for a normal um, uh, CDF. So we're going to do, and, and that's found in my TI calculators under, um, under um, var, var, I think this stands for variables. So, uh, uh, but uh, under distribution, which is your second function uh, variables. Uh, and you do, and you go down to normal CDF, and you you put in your uh, your numbers that it's supposed to be between, and then uh, here is your average right here, and here is your standard deviation, and you go ahead and hit enter, and you should get uh, choice D. Okay, take care.